Hello, President Bertolino. We are so happy to have you here with us today. Well, thank you. Delighted to be here. <laughs> thank you. I had the pleasure of meeting you over the summer. Yep. Um, when I was interning for The Current, but I'm very happy to finally do it for SDSU TV. Sure. Um, we had a couple of questions for you today, and just so the university gets to know you a little bit sure. better. Sure. Ha ha happy to answer this. Awesome. So what encouraged you to choose to apply and accept the job position here at Southern? <laughs> well, actually, this happened very quickly. Um, I, as you know, I was president of Linden State uh, in Vermont for four years. I had a wonderful run there. Um, I was at a conference where I met uh, President Papazian, and she had shared with me that she was moving on uh, to San Jose State. Um, and she knew that I had been interested in moving further south at some point. Excuse me, as you know, uh, I have been in a 400-mile commuter relationship with my partner of 23 years, Dr. Bill Leopold. Um, and so the result of that was um, she said, well, I know that you're not looking to move right now, but this may be an opportunity. So the truth of the matter is, is that I um, threw my hat in the ring and in May, interviewed in June, was offered the <laughs> job in July, and here I am. So it happened very quickly. Um, I think uh, the decision to, to find my way to Southern is both personal and professional. Um, on a personal note, uh, an opportunity for Bill and I to be in the same space and move in New Haven, so we're excited about that. An opportunity to be closer to uh, my family. Uh, my parents are, are not too far from here in, in South Jersey, as is my sister and uh, brother-in-law and two nephews. Um, and uh, our, our, our son and my grandson are moving from Iowa to Delaware. So that Everyone makes it clear. Everyone's going to be closer. I think one of the one of the um, probably primary reasons why uh, I said yes. Um, Southern is 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 very similar to an institution that I worked at in New York City, Queens College of the City University of New York. I love an urban setting. I spent 20 years in an urban setting. I love a highly diverse community. Um, so all of those were certainly pluses for me, uh, but the commitment to social justice and as a, as a value and as part of the core mission, that really stood <laughs> out for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What are the, some of the things that you have found to enjoy here in New Haven or at <laughs> Southern's, on Southern's campus? Well, I, I haven't um, experienced New Haven pizza yet. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, I've, I've been that. here about five or six weeks, and I know that uh, I need to do that sooner or later. So hopefully some students will hook me up, they'll give me some direction, <laughs> they'll, they'll tell me what to do. Um, it's been a whirlwind of activity in the last uh, five and a half, six weeks. Um, I have visited with, uh, obviously I've attended a lot of student events, as you know I'm kind of out and about quite a bit. <laughs> uh, everything from uh, our, our student uh, leadership retreat uh, when I first arrived uh, through uh, involvement day, the, uh, uh, the, the day of service um, that I got to participate in. Uh, I was fortunate enough to stop here over the summer to participate in the conversation on race. And just in the last uh, couple of weeks, between the day of service, between the uh, uh, Black Student Union um, uh, walk and, 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 and uh, Black Lives Matter march that they had very recently. Today I was uh, involved in a forum on Judaism um, and I think I have now met virtually every constituency <laughs> that I could meet, though this Friday I will meet with uh, our, our New Haven delegation in the, legislati in the legislators. Um, so it's it's, it's just been a whirlwind of great activity. Um, it is nice to walk from one end of campus. Folks have had to stop because um, I say hi. <laughs> and, and folks are, are right. like, wait, you're the president. And um, I'm glad yeah. they think that's cool. Uh, Definitely. And I did have my first, uh, I attended my first football game. How was that? I was, we well, were there we, also. We, we won. We uh, were. By one point, so that made it even better. <laughs> um, but I found my way from one end of the stands to the other, um, just to 
say hi to folks and take selfies and <laughs> see people Very in blue and white face media. paints. Yeah, it was great. It was great. That's awesome. And yes, uh, I, I have to I have to thank uh, the team in in in. I'm a social media guy, but <laughs> I, I I do have uh, some some folks that work behind the scenes awesome. to help with oh, that. Gosh. So yeah, it can be that, a lot. That is a plus. That's a lot of accounts to manage. It's a lot of accounts ones. to manage. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, there are some topics and issues from the university sure. that I'd like to bring up mm -hmm. um, that we haven't really had many answers to. Okay. Um, one, which students have many opinions of is Southern becoming a smoke-free campus mm -hmm. and the lack of enforcement being applied more than a year <laughs> after its implication. I'm mm -hmm. sure you have maybe even seen students mm -hmm. smoking on certain sides mm -hmm. of the campus that are pretty visible. Sure. What is your response to a smoke-free campus and do you plan on enforcing the policy that is in place? Yeah, it's interesting because I've worked at a number of campuses who are considering or who have, sh who have shifted to a smoke-free campus. And I think the purpose of a smoke-free campus is both awareness and uh, social responsibility. Um, it's not about policing. It never was. It's about um, individuals, uh, you know, uh, understanding the impact that their behavior may have on others in the community. And more importantly, this willingness on the part of um, others in the community and, and permission, if you will, for those folks to feel comfortable saying something. And, and folks need to be willing to do that um, because it's about the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. So, uh, you know, if I see students smoking, which I have, um, you know, m my inclination, I'm not going to go over and scold students and I'm not going to call public safety. I mean, we, we have uh, as, as a community, um, you know, while there are a number of issues that are important, you know, they're, they're, it, it's a delicate balancing act. But I am going to ask students to be respectful, and I'm going to say, look, you know, block that way, and and you can do what you need to do. And I'm asking you to respect that. So we really have it, it, it's almost like any behavior. You you want uh, we we want to to call each other on our behavior that isn't appropriate, and so. Um, yeah, th there isn't going to be a a, a smoke-free police department, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm I think this is a community-wide effort, and 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 let's ask people to be respectful of of and and the spirit and and honor the spirit of the law. Understood. Sure. Another issue SDSU TV has reported on. I've been here now four years, mm -hmm. and every year it's the same story that we do. Every every single time does not fail. Mm. We reported many times on tuition raises and budget cuts that directly affect <sighs> our departments. Mm -hmm. How does one adjust to both these changes that directly mm. affect all aspects of the community of the campus? Community? Yeah, and it, it's, it's difficult. I, 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 I can assure you that if, that if I had the answers to all of these questions, <laughs> um, I would certainly uh, <laughs> who, who knows? I, I, I'd be visiting a lot of universities. Um, you know, the, the it, it's got it's certainly gotten harder, not just at Southern. Uh, you know, I, I keep reminding folks we're not alone here. Uh, the the Northeast has been hit particularly bad. New England, very much so. And so, as a university in New England, um, it, it's it's difficult. Um, we're always going to face challenges of rising costs, even if it's cost of living. I am not expecting that our appropriation from the state will continue to increase, will, will increase at all, and in fact will probably decrease. And so what does that mean? I think that that means a couple of things. First, um, we're not going to cut our way out of a problem, okay? And so the answer is not to just cut people, cut programs, and then you're okay. Because once you start to cut, eventually it impacts the quality and the experience. I think that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that you can't continue um, to balance the budget on the backs of students. It's just not something that, that is, is feasible, especially when 60% of our students are Pell eligible. Yes. Um, so uh, many of our students are working at least one job if not multiple jobs, just to make ends meet. So I'm very aware of that. Um, so I think that while there'll continue to be 
cost of living increases, the question for the university becomes how do we, a couple things first, how do we ensure that we're spending the money we do have wisely, and how efficient and effective are we being? Secondly, what are our partnerships? And so if we're engaged in comprehensive partnerships mm -hmm. with other universities, not just in the system, not just across the state, but across the country, um, how does that provide greater opportunity for our students without costing us more money, okay? And third, um, what are the partnerships that we are willing to form uh, with businesses, with corporations, with nonprofits, the public-private partnerships, um, and having and developing an entrepreneurial spirit, if you will, I think is key to the success of any university. Um, so as Southern looks forward, uh, I'm going to be challenging folks to think very seriously about are we being entrepreneurial, um, and are we are we really um, prepared to be an institution of 10,000? Okay, we've lost 2,500 students in the last decade. We could we could talk about that and debate about that all day, um, but the truth is we haven't adjusted the infrastructure um, to serve 10,000. We've been focused on 12,500, and after a while, you become very comfortable with what yeah. you have. And so I would argue that we need to have a serious conversation about what does the infrastructure need to look at to serve 10,000 students. Um, and that's a hard conversation to have, but we'll have it. Uh, I have a lot of work. To, part, part of my responsibility as president is to raise money, raise dollars <laughs> yes. um, from a variety of different sectors. So I think that you will find that we will look to raise dollars raise in, in the form of grants and in other ways. Um, that don't focus on the state um, or tuition in order for us to um, meet ends meet. More imp I want to exceed meeting ends meet, yes. quite frankly, um, if we're going to continue to provide a quality education to our students. But this is a great place. There are a lot of resources here. Um, I, people will slap me for saying <laughs> that. Um, but I, I, I've worked at numerous institutions, and I think that folks, uh, we talk a lot about what we don't have. Uh, I would like to encourage people to think about what we do have. Um, you know, we have a two point f we have $2.4 million deficit this year, but we have a $230 million budget. So when you do the math, yeah. that means we are funding 99% of our budget. And in, um, in a time where institutions are really struggling, that's actually not bad. Would I like it to be balanced? Of course. Mm -hmm. But if the starting point is, all right, we've achieved 99%. Yeah. Um, and, and the last thing I'll point to is our, our financial success and our success as an institution certainly rests with our students. If we retained 1% more of our students every year, um, over the next four or five years, we would not have a budget crisis. We would not be in debt 100%. because that's a hundred students. Wow! And that uh, out of out of ten thousand five hundred students, that makes that that makes a world of difference yeah. for us and for our students. So I think the trick is not to focus primarily on recruiting a bunch of new students, mm -hmm. um, but keeping the students that we have. And if you um, are effective at retaining students and they're doing well, then the students will come in the front door anyway mm -hmm. because they'll see that students are having That's a good experience and being state. successful. Seems like a good That was plan. a very long-winded answer that to your question. Looks but like a, it sounds like a very great plan and I'm sure you're going to be a student favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to try. We're going to try. <laughs> you won't have to try too hard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so another Thing that we've heard and I've heard in classes and um, other students that not necessarily are journalism or communication majors but throughout campus um, you know we have to take all the LEP classes so we're mixed in with students <laughs> that we'll probably never see besides that class but some of the problems are that we have not had much consistency cons consistency excuse me with keeping a long-term president <laughs> on campus since President Adante faculty sure. and students alike have said that is one of the reasons we have these problems yeah. 
Would you agree or disagree? And what would you say is a long-term goal of yours here at Southern? Well, uh, I'll, I'll address the, the, the first part of that question. I think, I think that's accurate. I think con consistency and stability matter at an institution because you're always, as new people come in, you're always starting over again. Um, you know, I, 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 it is a challenging time, uh, I, I think, in the recruitment cycle for college and university presidents um, because there are probably more presidencies than there are qualified individuals who are willing to apply for those positions, okay? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like any other leadership role. I mean, folks are, uh, I mean, if, even if you look at uh, our, our, our presidential elections, there are a lot of people who could run but choose not to for a variety of different yeah. reasons. It's tough, and you don't have a life. <laughs> and so I, I think the same holds true for the university presidency, that um, it's, it's, one can certainly make a, a comfortable living, so to speak, but one could easily transition to the business world um, and make a very comfortable living. So I think, I think um, there, you need to, to have people that are very committed to this type of work. I think that's the first thing. And those people that are out there committed to this type of work uh, um, are in demand and are often called on very quickly. I mean, I was at Linden for four years, okay? Now, my primary motivation for uh, leaving the institution was, was, as I mentioned before, very personal. Um, but you can assume that during the course of that four years, people call um, because opportunities continue to present themselves. And, and for President, in fairness to President Papazian, um, her, her family, she has family roots in California, so I understand that need and that desire. So hopefully for Southern and for San Jose, um, <laughs> you know, uh, n now that we're with our families, uh, th that, uh, you know, we're able to, to establish some roots. Um, Bill and I are about to close on a house next week. Congratulations. Uh, here in New Haven in Mars Cove. Um, yes. And that's important to us because uh, we've only purchased a home once in our entire life. Oh, wow. And we usually rent. So okay. the fact that we're buying a house um, serious. is serious <laughs> is, is serious for us. It, it, and that we're buying a house in New Haven in yeah. particular, I, I hope sends the message that we're here, we're looking to be here for the long haul. Almost the, 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 the bulk of the leadership team that is in place now has been here three years or less. I think yeah. I'm not looking to make any changes to the leadership. I think it's a strong leadership mm -hmm. team. And so I think we're all ready to be grounded yeah. and now roll up our sleeves and get to work. So my hope is that we'll be sitting here again in five, six, seven, eight years. Uh, well, not, you. You know, not, with not, me. not with you. Not you would have graduated. <laughs> you can come back as an alum. Of course. Um, but that's, that's, that's certainly my hope. Now, there was, a, uh, was there a second part to that question that I a long term, term, A long-term goal, but you did, did go over that. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 you know, the, the, the long-term goal is to stay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a, and we have a, a pretty comprehensive strategic plan that um, uh, we, we kind of got put on hiatus un until the transitions were completed. And now that the transitions, um, you know, have taken place, it's time for us to dive right in. So it's kind of where we're at. Great. What about a short-term goal? We're almost midway. I have my first midterm next week. Okay. So short-term goal as the first semester that you're here, maybe yeah. first year. I think, uh, I th I think I've already, uh, I'm achieving it pretty quickly, and that is to change the tone and tenor of the institution, um, to be visible, to be approachable, um, p people, for, for people to know who their president is, um, and, more, and, and to take that a step further, um, to begin to raise the profile of the institution and to be out and about um, across all constituencies. I think it matters. Um, when uh, you know when I, I, I walk around campus or attend a football game or and and students know who I am um, 
because it allow it it it, it makes students feel comfortable enough mm -hmm. to then pull me aside and say, I have a problem, I have a question, I want to share an experience. Um, we as a university can't know what our students are really experiencing unless you ask the student, mm -hmm. the custodian, the receptionist, or the police officer mm -hmm. um, here, here on our, or the resident director. I'm, I'm very, uh, ha and having been a resident director at the start of my career, I, I, know, <laughs> I, I know who the frontline people are. Yeah. And I know who has the most information. You know, the, the, <laughs> the president, the vice presidents, and the deans, yeah, you know, we have information, but let's be honest. Yeah. Um, if I really want information, <laughs> I, I'm going to I'm gonna go to certain places or I'm going to go sit in the stands or I'm going to go have dinner or lunch in con. No, definitely. Which I've done. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank we you. very much appreciate you taking the time to sit down My with pleasure. us. We know how busy you are. So we hope to have you here again soon. Is there a message you would like to send to our viewers today? <laughs> well, first, invite me back anytime. I'm of happy course. to chat. And within the next week or so, we're going to roll out Joe Wants to Know. So I would really encourage students and members of our community to really participate. It gives them an opportunity to have a voice, share a perspective, share what their thoughts, their ideas, their concerns are so that we can address them. And if you see me around campus, stop, introduce yourself, tell me what your Southern experience is like. All right, great. Thank you, okay. Dr. Joe. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right.